I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. You can watch this video in its full quality on Patreon. The link is in the description. Let's start with the CPU performance. Using CPU limited settings on an R5 3600X with extended distance scaling disabled, we are able to achieve around 100 FPS on average with the 1% lows dipping below 60 FPS. And using extended distance scaling set to max, the overall frame rate decreased by over 10%. However, using ray tracing noticeably lowered our frame rates as it puts way more load on the CPU than the GPU in this game. There seems to be a huge bottleneck across all three tests as the GPU is sitting around 50 to 80% utilization while the CPU is somewhat resting at around 50 to 60% utilization. So this game appears to not fully utilize the CPU, the exact same issue as the original legacy version. My recommendation is to know what your CPU performance is and adjust your settings from there. And I highly recommend disabling ray tracing entirely just for the CPU performance alone. And speaking of ray tracing, it appears to suffer from noticeable visual issues, mainly noise that is probably caused by a weak denoiser. And this was noticeable across a different combination of ray tracing settings, even with all of them turned on at max quality. And this was mainly visible on the ray traced global illumination, reflections, and shadows. I didn't really notice this issue on the ray traced ambient occlusion, but if I were to look for it, I'm sure I would have found it. Now let's get into the settings, starting with ray traced shadows. Firstly, I would like to highlight that the shadow box issue is now fixed when turning on ray traced shadows, which really irritated me and many others with the legacy version and with this version as well if you are not using ray tracing. As for the quality of the RT shadows themselves, it's just as one would expect. More accurate, softer, and more stable shadows, but increasing the quality above high doesn't really seem to make a noticeable improvement, except for grass shadows, which are disabled for some reason, except on Ultra, which enables them again. GPU performance-wise, it appears to have a small impact. So if you want to turn on ray tracing, then RT shadows on high is the safe option, but you will lack grass shadows. However, I recommend turning it off entirely. The ray tracing reflection setting increases the amount of ray tracing used with each option, and it appears that the resolution stays the same across all options. In certain scenes, like on puddles and water reflections, they look even worse than before with the reflections becoming very unstable and shimmery. So it's a hit or miss depending on the scene, and the performance impact is quite noticeable. So keep this one turned off for the best performance. And turning on ray traced global illumination sure does increase the quality and accuracy of the lighting in this game and it looks quite nice but it introduces noticeable stability issues and shimmering across many edges and surfaces and even using the ultra option doesn't seem to fix this issue a hundred percent and its performance impact is large so keep this option disabled for the most stable image quality and higher performance I was pleasantly surprised to see that ray traced ambient occlusion in this game has a positively large improvement to image quality. 
It adds more depth to areas where standard ambient occlusion wasn't capable of reaching. And GPU performance-wise, using high barely decreases performance, while very high and ultra noticeably lower it. The ray tracing seen BVH quality setting increases the quantity of objects included in ray traced reflections, shadows, and lighting. But in my testing, I only found that shadows had a noticeable difference with this setting, and it has a negligible performance impact. So use very high if you are using ray tracing. As for frame scaling, also known as upscaling, going from native TAA to FSR3 quality increases sharpness and detail, and DLSS quality appears to have a little bit more stable and detailed image. Putting them all together side by side reveals that FSR3 quality has a soft look, while DLSS quality retains more details, especially seen on the grass blades. As for their quality during motion, using FSR3 quality noticeably decreases stability and adds shimmering on some surfaces, while DLSS quality is slightly more stable than native TAA, which is why DLSS quality is my recommended option. The shader quality setting controls a few different graphical features, some of which are lighting, shading, and displacement mapping and it appears that very high has exclusive features which are vital to the game's graphics and its performance impact is somewhat noticeable but worth it so we use very high for this setting the texture quality setting is straightforward here each option gradually and noticeably increases texture resolution and VRAM usage equally. Anisotropic filtering is also straightforward here with no measurable performance impact on 16x. So use 16x for the best image quality. The particles quality setting still requires a restart after changing options, and here it seems that only the ultra option seems to make a noticeable difference to both image quality and performance, which is why I recommend very high for the best balance, as on ultra you might get lots of FPS drops when many things are happening on screen like during firefights and explosions. Tessellation gradually increases the complexity of surfaces of some objects, like these palm trees, and it only has a small performance impact, which is why I recommend the very high option. The water quality on low looks absolutely bland and horrible. Increasing the setting to high looks a lot better. But I had a hard time spotting any improvements on the higher options. But thankfully, the performance impact is the same across high, very high, and ultra. So I recommend ultra for the best image quality. The grass quality setting doesn't require a restart when changing options now. Normal doesn't render grass at all. High does, but lacks shadows on grass and foliage, in which foliage shadows are now enabled on very high, and grass shadows are additionally enabled on ultra, while also increasing grass density and render distance. This setting still kills performance, so I recommend high for the best balance. The lighting quality setting basically controls the amount of shadows that some point lights like car headlights render, with each option gradually increasing the number of objects that cast shadows, and Ultra further improves upon this with more accurate lighting. It has a small performance impact, up to very high, which is why it is my recommended option. The reflection quality setting gradually increases the resolution and quality of reflections with each option, 
Each option hire has a noticeable impact to performance, depending on the scene, and especially very high, where for some reason, underwater scenes tank performance when using very high and above. In this scene, it almost halves frame rates, so I recommend high for the best balance overall. The shadow quality setting increases shadow resolution and overall shadow quality with each option. And performance wise, going from normal to high has a small impact, while very high has a noticeable impact to performance, which is why I recommend high for the best balance. The soft shadows setting gradually softens shadows with each option and I found that the softer option looked basically the same as soft while costing a bit more performance and the softest option definitely looked more soft than the others while costing even more performance. Therefore, I recommend the soft option for the best balance. The long shadows setting elongates shadows during sunsets and sunrises and this setting can seriously tank performance out of nowhere when they happen. Definitely keep this setting turned off for the best and most stable performance. The high resolution shadow setting increases the resolution of shadows noticeably and performance decreases noticeably as well which is why I recommend disabling this setting for the best performance. The extended shadows distance setting increases shadow distance as the name suggests. However, it still decreases performance for no immediately noticeable impact to image quality. So I still recommend turning this off for the best performance. For post effects, in this scene, going from normal to high enables bloom, which can be easily seen on the sun. Very high enables light depth of field on distant objects, and ultra looks basically the same as very high in this scene. In this next scene, going from normal to high applies bloom as stated before, and very high enables lens flares on vehicle headlights while ultra also looks the same as very high. High noticeably decreases performance and going to very high and ultra further decreases performance. So I recommend using high for the best balance. The in-game depth of field setting adds this really nice looking depth of field effect which is mostly seen on the upper side of the screen. The normal option completely disables this effect, while high and very high gradually increase the quality of depth of field, and it has a negligible performance impact. But since we chose to use post effects on high, this setting is not available. However, if you have the option to use it, I recommend using the high option. For ambient occlusion, Going from off to HBAO looks decent but lacks the accuracy and depth that the SSDO option offers and they both seem to perform the same. So SSDO is my recommended option here. The population density setting controls the amount of NPCs that can be seen on screen at once. Performance wise, when GPU limited, it barely affects performance. However, when CPU limited, the max value can noticeably impact performance. So my recommended value here is 7 out of 10, especially if you are being CPU bottleneck. The population variety setting controls the amount of different instances or variations of NPCs and vehicles that can be seen at once. It takes up some VRAM usage, so if you have spare VRAM, max this setting out. The distance scaling setting is vital to the base image quality of the game, as it controls the level of detail of objects in the distance, and the good thing is that it only slightly affects performance when GPU or even CPU limited, so keep it maxed out.
The high detail streaming while flying setting controls the level of detail or quality of certain objects when flying. Even though when you're flying you won't really focus on these objects, the difference is very noticeable. And performance wise, it depends on the scene. But when it does affect frame rates, it is only by a little bit. So keep it turned on. The extended distance scaling setting further increases the level of detail of objects at a distance and increases foliage draw distance as well. The improvements are very noticeable. However, the performance impact is very large on both the GPU and CPU. Only increase this option if you have lots of performance to spare. And here are the optimized settings. And while you take your time reading this very long and absurd list of optimized settings, I would like to give a special shout out to Chirpy for being a platinum member on Patreon. Thank you very much Chirpy for your support. And you can support me directly on Patreon as well, so I can keep producing videos just like this one. Now for the performance. The game on max settings using ray tracing at native 1440p is very demanding, especially during sunsets and sunrises, in areas with lots of foliage, and when the car headlights are turned on to cast lots of dynamic shadows. The game averages around the mid 20 FPS in this area, while the optimized settings at native average around 90 to 100 FPS in the same area. That's a huge increase of around 300%. And using DLSS quality further increases frame rates noticeably, and VRAM usage drops a lot with the optimized settings. As before, it exceeded 8 gigabytes of usage and now it's just under 6 gigabytes of usage and looking at the CPU performance it starts to bottleneck the GPU at these frame rates especially when entering the city it appears that the game is noticeably more limited by the CPU than the GPU in areas where it matters as performance can drop significantly in CPU heavy areas as the 1% lows are dipping to 70 FPS on both native and DLSS quality optimized settings. And the GPU is starting to have a lot of breathing room. One thing I don't like is that the CPU usage in these scenarios is not being fully utilized to the last drop. But at least the frame times are smooth and there are no stuttering issues. So. What do you guys think of the enhanced edition?